such an honor. Beginning, Tim jumped right in in a good spot, and uh, I had spent a couple of hours this morning already uh, going through the first chapter of the book of Ephesians and meditating and seeing what God wanted to say uh, about it because it was integral part of what I wanted to deal with. You cannot read, read Ephesians 1 without understanding that God's purpose for humanity is fully there. You can make it personal in your life as you come and allow him to have complete um, sway. That's the word I want. Complete sway in your life. That's basically how we have to come to understand it because it's up to us. I keep hearing over and over again in my innermost that uh, none of this is automatic. None of this is automatic. He gives. But the scripture says in John 1, 12 is this. It says, it says this, to them that receive him. There's the key. There's the trigger that sets the reality of everything that he's promised us. To them that receive him, gives he the right to become the children of God. The word for there is children. It's a technon. It means relationship. And that's one of the things we have to realize, that God, God has asked us to receive. Receive receive that you might become related to God now when you're related to God guess what happens sooner or later if you hang out with God enough sooner or later you're going to think like him you're going to act like him I, I looked through the three and a half years that the disciples walked with him and, and you know it was right down until Peter heard that cock crow three times before he finally got it are you listening? And how many times did Jesus, they seen all the miracles, all the everything, and how many times did Jesus have to say, oh, you have little faith? He was constantly having to talk to them, and they were seeing, they were hearing. Everybody, everybody, I've heard, all, I've heard basically all my life, most Christian people, oh, I, I just wish I was walking with Jesus. What's wrong with the Holy Ghost? I can't wait till Jesus gets back. What's wrong with the Spirit of God? It's that Spirit that raised him from the dead. Are you all listening? It's, it's much better than, than what we really realize. I, I'm, I'm, it's, it's so great. And when he started talking about the mystery, it's a mystery to 90% of Christianity, what God is really after. Most of them are still in the idea of, I just want to die and go to heaven because it's really going to be great over there. They haven't been there yet, so how do they know? And I want to tell you what. Jesus died and came back, and he didn't talk about heaven once. Spent 40 days with them and never talked about heaven once. What he talked about was the kingdom of God. Isn't that amazing? So what are we after? We're after allowing him to come and live his reality, his person, his kingship, his life, his everything through us. And how does it work? It works little by little. I love it the way Isaiah says it. It's going to come here a little, there a little, line upon line, Precept upon precept. How's God going to deal with us? You got, every one of us got precepts in our lives that's got to change. Okay? And what he does, he brings us up against situations where our precept don't work. <laughs> Can you imagine that your precept? I thought it. I know it's right. How wrong can you be just because you thought it? Precept upon precept. Here a little. 
They're little. That's how God works. He brings you through situations. Your precept, you try to put it to work, it don't work. Sometimes you have to survive the consequences or hope you survive the consequences before you change your precepts. So God is really after us to develop uh, this mighty king, this mighty God, this delivering God that wants us what he's already promised us. He already, he already declared we're, we are kings and priests. He didn't say we're going to be. So you're a king and you're a priest. Guess what happens? You got to function like a priest. You got to function like a king. You got to do it that way, the way God wants it. So that's what we're going to do. Amen? And it just doesn't work that way in here. Just because you show up here doesn't mean it's automatic. I, I, I loved it. I loved it the first time I ever heard Clarice say it. Said, she said this, knowledge of a matter does not mean possession of it. But I want to tell you what, if you got him, you've already got possession. You just got to learn how to function. It. Listen to him. Allow him to work it out in your life. Amen? Well, I got a couple little statements to make. Uh, I think, I think Mr. Harvey and Sister Sally are leaving this week. Are you leaving this this, this coming week? So at the end of the service, you're gonna have, we're gonna have to pray for Harvey and Sally. I, they're going back and get a suntan. Anyway, and Anne Marie, she's going back, and. Uh, She'll, she'll get outside because she's always cold. I mean, she's the only person I know that I went to the beach with and she had to put on a sweatshirt, so. But uh, she'll be going on Wednesday. I'm not really sure what day Harvey and Sally's going. They're leaving on Wednesday. Sister Fran and I'll be leaving on Thursday morning. It was up in the air, but I think it's finalized. We'll be leaving Thursday morning. Um, Next Sunday, I'll be I'll be preaching at uh, the church in Port here or Kimball Township is really what I should call it. The church in Kim Port here in Kimball Township. I'll be preaching there next Sunday, and uh, the Sunday following that, I'll be at uh, a church in Highland, Michigan, uh, Brother Danny and Sister Gail's church. Um, that church, we're down there sharing with them and sometime in the following week we'll be home um this coming thursday stephen's going to share so everybody come out and hear what the man of god has to say amen the following the following thursday uh brother ed is going to share with us and uh, i'm i'm looking forward for all of this to get on so i can listen to it well on uh Overhead, and then the 13th, uh, the Thursday of the 13th, Brother Danny was going to share with us, share with you. I'm not sure whether we'll be home that day, but we'll try. Um, Sunday, next Sunday is Tim, and the following Sunday is Brother Bud. So we're, we're pretty much covered here at the church. Um, I think we all know how to behave ourselves and, uh, and, uh, and, help one another, and do for one another, go the extra mile, and do all of that. So I just, I'm, I'm just hopeful that it, it all gets done. I, um, I don't know if there's any, anybody else we gotta pray for or anything, but we're, we're looking forward to that. Praise God. If you've got your Bibles, um, where am I gonna start, Lord? Where do, Okay, I I want to I want to kind of hit the last few aspects of purpose. We, you, as you know, we've been dealing with uh, we dealt first with passion, prayer, and purpose, the things that will cause us to move forward into God without passion. But you can have you can have passion and have it in the wrong direction, with the wrong focus. But when we're talking about having passion for what God is after, we, that's exactly what we got to have. God, um, 
we, we covered this in when we covered First John on th last Thursday night. He said, whatever, whatever you ask in his will. One of the things Tim covered today out of Ephesians was the mystery of his will. The key is, the word, the word mystery that he pronounced so well, mysterion, means, what it means is something hidden, okay? And primarily, it was a rabbinic um, statement in the Greek where the rabbis, as much as they dug into the word and how they did the word, got it, it's, it's, a, it's a real study, if you really do a study and find out how deeply they went into the word and they would, they would take the Hebrew and every Hebrew letter had a number and they would, they would number the letters going this way and they would number the letters going this way and they always had to total up to exactly the right translation or the right understanding. A lot of times we in our English get messed up in some of the words. We translate some of the words one way and they mean another thing. Like God. This is not what I wanted to share, but I'm, I, I gotta keep, I gotta keep saying it because Ephesians chapter one, I'm gonna, I'm gonna begin in verse uh, three. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with some spiritual blessings. How much? Is that what it says? What translation you got? No. You want to know what the Greek says? It says every one. That leaves nothing out. The Greek says God has already blessed us with every spiritual blessing there is. You, there's, there's no more spiritual blessings to get. He's already blessed us with them. We just got to learn how to get a hold of them and take them. Get to them. We got to understand what the qualification is. Okay, I, I, I don't want to preach. I'm, I'm going. Bless us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. If you have a King James Bible, you notice that the word places is in italics. That means it is not in the original. It was added. Because if you take out the place, then the heavenlies aren't become a place. They become a state of being. Say spiritual things are heavenly. Say God is heavenly because God is a spirit are we okay okay let me let me read I don't, I don't want to but I'll deal with it anyway according as he has chosen us in him uh, sometime after he built everything before what? Oh, then he chose us in him before Genesis 1, right? Yeah, because you don't realize what Genesis 1 was. Genesis, Genesis 1 was what Moses wrote down. Okay? You, you, you all know what that is? And Moses went up there to see God. And he said to God, he said, I want to see your face. And God said, no, you can't see my face. You can only see my backside. What he said is, you can't see where I'm going, Moses. You can only see where I've been. Are you listening? 
So what's behind? So all he did was he spent the first 25 verses of talking about the earth being without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. Wait a minute. Before there was even a earth without form and void, before there was even darkness, there was God. Are you all right? We're going to have to get some of this stuff straight because we keep talking about going on and growing up and being sons and, and all of this stuff. And most of the time we have failure in our understanding of some basic truths. He has chosen us into him before the foundation of the world. For what purpose? That we should be holy and without blame before him. You read Revelation 20, he talks about a judgment, he talks about all that stuff. He, in, another, in two places in the New Testament, Paul wrote and said that you're going to give an account for the things done in this body. Are you listening? But if you're in him and you walk in repentance on an ongoing basis, guess what? Everything behind, God forgets. Even God forgets. Okay? It's when we refuse to come into agreement with God so God can put them in the sea of his great forgetfulness. All right? Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children. There's the word I wanted to deal with. The word adoption is a misplaced word in our modern English. Do you understand? We all know what happens if somebody don't take care of their kids or whatever. Well, they don't do that much anymore. They just abort them before they have them. God, I want to tell a story now, but we'll leave it. But the word adoption in the Greek is a Greek word, weos, made up of two words. Weos, which means mature, grown up, adult. Thacian. Are you listening? We us Athasian. The placing of a son. That came in Jesus' life, in his experience here on the planet. Okay? He was brought before the waters of baptism on that day. Remember what John said? So that the scriptures are fulfilled. And on that day, Jesus came. He went through the scripture, fulfilled all the Old Testament scriptures. And then it said, then it said, there was a voice came out of heaven and said, this is my beloved weos. Not technon. Not some, some little child, there's another word, that, nephos, and that means non-speaking. But in, in our English Bible, most of the time it's, it's child. Uh, John uses it back in his writing, little child. But this word, weathasian, means the placing of a son. It's when a son comes to maturity and the father declares him my son, he qualifies for my inheritance. Do you understand? We all got children. Are you listening? 
But the minute they're born, we don't give them the title of the car the key, and the keys. But they're still your children. It's when they come to qualification, to maturity, we, adoption, we them. okay? He has predestinated. Does anybody know what that word means? Say, God has predetermined my place in him sometime after I behave myself. No. That's, he's predestined you to be a son. Are you listening? Having predestinated us under the adoption of children through Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. Okay, here we are with will again. Say God's will was a good pleasure. Say God's a happy camper when he can place us as his sons. That's male and female. Are you listening? Say, when was all this determined? Say, this was determined before the foundation of the world. Well, where was I in those days? In him. Spirits just don't come, grow on trees or on a bush or something. And when you're decided to come along, your whoever produced you decided to come along, and God just goes over and picks a spirit off a tree and said, we'll plunk it in here. Say, no, God determined you. He got, had the spirit in himself. Yeah, you think I'm crazy, right? I got to read you another verse of scripture. Is that all right? I like the Bible. <laughs> you want to know why? Because it always messes up the way man thinks. <laughs> I really should have been a brain surgeon. <laughs> Acts chapter 17. Here's all these smart guys. They're, they're, they're so smart up in Athens, you know. They go to Mars Hill and they talk about something new, some new invention, whatever, you know. And they didn't even have computers and none of that stuff. But anyway, oh, by the way, computers are only as smart as the person who puts the information in. Did I ever say that? Okay. Let me read a little bit here. Verse uh, 22. Oh, God. Do, do I want to read all that? Okay, yeah, I want to read all that. Is that okay? Verse 22, chapter 17, book of Acts. You know the Pentecostal book? When, I, when, when Fred and I first left the Nazarene church and went into the Pentecostal book, this church, is, this is the only, only book they knew. The only book they read was the book of Acts. You know, so anyway, here we go. Paul stood at the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you're too superstitious. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> they were superstitious. <laughs> you wonder why? They didn't know the mystery. <laughs> For as I passed by and behold your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. I can find that in a lot of places. Whom therefore ye ignorantly worship him and declare, um, him, him I declare unto you. God that made the world, here we go. God who what? Made the world. Made the world. Okay. And all things therein. Seeing he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in shrines, inner temples, made with hands. Okay. Neither is he worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life. Say everything, everything. there ever was. God gave life. 
I could mess your brain up, but even the serpent in the garden, God said, the scripture says, that he was the most subtle thing that God made. Ah, gee, I, I, I'm messing with you. I know. Neither is worship with men's hands, though he needed a thing. See that he giveth to all life and breath and all things, and hath made of one blood, say one blood, all nations, of men for to dwell on the face of the earth, and hath determined, say God picked out, God picked out. The, time. the time. Keros. A keros time can be a moment in time, a select time. Say, Sister Barbara, what was your birthday? March 19th. And I'm not going to say what year. Okay? 1936. Okay? That day, God had already picked out Sister Barbara. He already had that day all picked out. He knew exactly what her life was going to be like. He foresaw everything that she was going to face. But the end result of his purpose was that she would come to full and complete sonship. Say, so you don't know what I went through. Well, let me say this. <clears throat> they have a word for children that are born without married parents. You, 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 you understand? And Jesus carried that title all the time he was alive. The father didn't care how he got here and what he went through to get here. What happened was the father had a plan which was predetermined from before the foundation of the world. Remember what Kelly used to say? There was a meeting before time was. And in that meeting, the son agreed, Father, I will go through whatever it takes to fulfill your will. Maybe I ought to ask you that. Are you willing to go through the Father's will to obtain his purpose in your life, seeing as how he sent you out of himself to fulfill a purpose on planet Earth. Oh no, I'm gonna pick my own way of living. Go right ahead. Have at it. We all got the same choice. But the one design plan is right here. God has predestined us to be conformed to the image of the Son. His Son. You have no other choice. Oh yeah, I guess you do. You do have a choice. I was, uh, I had the opportunity last week to uh, go to uh, Andrew's grandfather's uh, wake, funeral. And I had met his grandpa years ago when he was still alive. And now, uh, but when I went to the funeral, they had him in this little box about this big. And they had a lot of pictures over here, a whole bunch of them, all of them over here when he, when he was in the Air Force, 30 plus years in the Air Force. And then there were some, all of these other pictures over here and all that. And all of that was, was a memory. Here's the choice. 
God came that you might have life and you might have it more abundantly. Now, whether we lay hold of life or not, beloved, is up to us. For this corruptible, life and death is in the power of the tongue, but life and death comes out of the abundance of the heart. So here's the decision maker on whether we live or die. You all listening? Because it's right here in the book. I believe. I want to be more than just a pile of ashes someday. I want to be in him to the point that he can fill me with life. Not my life, his life. Because his life is endless. His life is complete. And I've read enough of the book to I believe. There is access to the tree of life because the tree of life is the Holy Ghost. And he's come to live in us and through us and to express life. I don't think I just don't think living forever is the only answer. There's still work to do. Because the whole creation is groaning and travailing for the manifestation of the sons of God. Once the sons of God are manifestation full of life, it's got to take the groan out of creation. It's got to fix what's not right. How is it going to do that? Because it's going to become the glory of the Most High. Say, God, God has told us multiple times in the scriptures. Oh, turn with me to Isaiah. Is that all right? Turn with me to Isaiah chapter 11. Isaiah chapter 11. One of my favorite chapters, so. Chapter 11. You all right? And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. Say, Jesse Jesse. had a rod. rod. And he had a stem. Say, David David. was the rod rod. out of the stem. And a branch shall grow out of his roots. Jesus are y'all listening? Was the root, the foundation. And out of him grew a branch. What do you get on branches? Fruit. How many have ever heard the statement, a branch man? A branch man. That's what the sons of God are. They're branch men. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Now, I can go through this whole thing. There's sevenfold spirits of God, all that got to be functioned. We ought to, we ought to read this and memorize it so we understand what God wants to do in us. But li- listen to this. Spirit of wisdom and understanding, counsel and might, knowledge in the fear of the Lord. Okay? And he shall make him of quick understanding. Say God's people, God's people. ought to be able, be able. to discern every situation they're in. Say we make bum decisions because we don't discern the situation we're in. Ninety percent of the time we make decisions to make it easy on my flesh. He shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of ears, but with righteousness shall he judge the poor or the hungry and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. 
and he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth. I want to, I want to say that. How many times have you ever read that scripture? He will smite the earth with the rod of his mouth. You know how he is going to get that done? Are you there? Keep your thumb there. Turn over to Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2, verse 26 and 7 and 8. Okay? Now let's start with verse. Let's start with verse 25. But that which you have already, hold fast till I come. That come does not mean the physical coming. It means till he comes on the scene and gives you the, the empowerment to do what he wants. Okay? It's a different word. And he that overcometh, are you listening? Who's the he? That's the ones in the church. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give authority over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my Father, and I will give him the morning star. So we already know who's talking. Jesus, right? And he says, if someone, or a group of someones, in the church will overcome, keep his works to the end, I give you authority. To speak into the nations. It's time this church learns the principle of being able to speak into the nations. Let me tell you something. If you learn to do it, and you do it constantly, it becomes just like getting up in the morning and having your coffee. I found this morning, I looked at Fox News. That's one of the things I do. I just turn to Fox News and see what's on there. I, I can't listen to all the, all the other stuff. So I listened to Fox News, and the first thing that was up on Fox News was this. In Chicago, there was a fire. Two adults and six children got, got burned to death. That was the second thing that was posted. First thing that was posted was John McCain passed away yesterday. One amazing thought about John McCain. John McCain passed away yesterday of brain cancer. 10 years ago to the day, Ted Kennedy passed away with brain cancer. And I began to pray and say, God, what's, what's this all about? There's, you're saying something here. But anyway, I saw this thing about this family and these six children. And I began to pray and say, God, show mercy. Give comfort. But what did God say to you? If you overcome, I give you authority. With your mouth, you'll be able to rule nations. Well, I guess I'm over somebody's head. Uh, turn, to, turn to chapter 12. We'll settle it, okay? In the mouth of two or three witnesses, there's... Okay, so I got two witnesses, okay? So let's get the third one. Okay. And there appeared, chapter 12, verse 1, there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars, and she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold a great fiery red, is the way it should read, a fiery red dragon, 
having seven heads, ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child. Male child. It's, a, it's not just a male child. The word here is just like the Greek word that we us, a fully mature man. Do you ever see that happen? Do you ever see a woman do that? I, I, I got a boy over here that weighed 914, I think, or 911, one of the two. I have a hard time. He came out hungry and he still is. But I never seen one that was fully mature. She brought forth a man child, listen to me, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. What was the rod of iron? It wasn't some big club he had in his hand. It was the tongue in his mouth that he could begin to speak reality. That's our problem. We play like the world. We live like the world. And God wants us to begin to speak into things with the authority of heaven. That's his purpose for us. I've told the story, stood in the front door and cursed a tornado that was coming right towards us. It was within five miles of our house, coming dead on us. And I cursed it and declared it was not to hit anything or hurt anything. It turned due north, went through Wadhams, right west of where Dale has his church. Went across the river, up in the farm country, through a bunch of cornfields, and went out into Lake Huron and sucked itself full of water and died. Say, God, God. will give you authority over anything. It's time the church, this church, arises and begins to fulfill the call and purpose of God in its life. Well, pastor, why don't you? Well, maybe that's not my job. My job is to teach you. My job is to warn you. My job is to see you rise up. and rule the nations. But before we can start ruling these nations out here, we got a head full of imaginations we got to begin to speak to. Sometime you got to look into your brain and tell yourself to sit down and shut up. Say God has purpose. For every one of us. Everyone. Say the power, the power of, the of the kingdom is a head, a head. And, a and a mouth full of kingdom words. Back to chapter 11. And I'm going to finish. He shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth. You're, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins. Right living is what God demands of the church. I'm sick and tired of seeing churches and preachers and people living like the world. And doing like the world. Men that ought to know better leaving their wives and their families and running after other women. I'm going to let you in on a little secret, guys. Men that carry an anointing will draw women. That's fact. Keep yourself.
and righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, faithfulness the girdle of his reins. The wolf shall lie down with the lamb, a leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the young lion and the fatling together. You say, how in the world can this be? Because God will have a people who can begin to speak peace into a midst of a terrible situation. But we're always waiting for God to do it. The cow and the bear shall feed, the young ones will lie down together, the lion shall eat straw like an ox, and the sucking child shall play on the hole of an ass. And the weaned child shall put his hand in the cockatrice's den. Verse 9. Are you all right? They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain. You say, well, where in the world is that? That's wherever God's people are. God's holy mountain is Zion. What is Zion? It's a place that's conspicuous. The light of his glory so shines from Zion to the point that the nations want to come. It says he will. Yeah, you're right. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth, listen to this, say the earth, the earth. shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. How much water is in the sea? It's all water. Are you all listening? How much water is in the sea? It's all water. So the knowledge of the Lord is going to cover all the earth. Then the knowledge of the Lord is all there'll be. No, I can't, get, I can't buy that. I've never seen it. That's because you haven't lived long enough. You never stepped into the heavenlies. You never seen God's plan. You never had purpose enough in your life to begin to say, God, I'm going to let you rule every aspect of my life. Not even Fox News is going to get that one. Are you listening? This is not to fulfill the lust of your flesh. This is to fulfill the divine intention of an almighty God. That's why you're here. You say, well, things are going haywire in my, wife, my life. Well, speak to it in the name of Jesus. Declare his victory over it. I can't do it for you. It's only easy. I can get a prophetic word. It makes me feel so good. <laughs> I get the chills up in my back. Speak to it yourself. Declare in the name of the Lord. Prophesy to it. Keep the devil and all his crowd out of your neighborhood. You wonder why? Because the power is inside of you. That's it. Oh, and by the way, it ain't Democratic or Republican. It's kingdom of God. I love you all. I want to see this house, this church, come to full maturity. I want you, every one of you, to begin to think like God. That's what glory is. Thinking like God. And the minute you begin to think like God, God will speak into your innermost. And you begin to speak through your mouth. That's what the day of Pentecost was all about, was the speaking forth. 
It wasn't just talking in tongues. There were 19 different sects of people there with different languages. And they heard them all speak in the glory of God. You tell me, was it the speaking that was supernatural or was it the hearing? <laughs> it might be too tough, bud. It's really true. It'll work in your life. I've learned that if you begin to declare in the name of the Lord, and you speak according to the will of God, it'll come to pass. But it may not come on your timetable. Let me tell you something. You can declare over your kids, your family. God said, thou shalt be saved in all my house. Why in the world do we give up? You might even die. But die declaring. I love you. I, I dare you. I double dare you. I double dare you this week to take some so-called impossible situation in your life and begin to speak the word of the Lord into it. And just see if God don't answer That's what the Bible said. It said they'll not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain. The knowledge of the Lord is going to fill all the earth. You all want to know what the purpose is? You want to know why I'm passionate for this thing? Because God's got a purpose that's beyond human comprehension. It's beyond your ability to think. It's never been seen and it's never been done. But God wants to do it in this hour, in this season, in a people who are willing. Amen? Amen, I guess I'm done. My challenge for you is, when I come back, when I come back, have all your imaginations under control. Speak to them. I'm going to tell you, 90% of us, we think just because we think it, it's right. If you followed everybody's idea, you'd be crazy. You've got to hear the will of the Lord. You've got to read the book and obey. You've got to declare what he says in the book. And begin to speak it. God had it on plan for ages and ages, but when he spoke, it began to happen. Say, God, when you let me speak. I love you. Uh, Sister Fran and I are going away. All of you are leaving. Gather down here. 